Beijing flat, Huang Yongyu has all the trappings of a highly successful artist. Japanese television and video camera, Western pipes and cigars, a son and a daughter studying at American universities, a Western library of all the big names in art, and a collection of Chinese paintings and antiques that's worth a place in a museum. The owl is there as a reminder of a painting that landed him in prison. Now he's reinstated and rich, allowed to paint what he likes and to sell abroad. Each brush stroke can be subtly different to the artist and the audience. The categories have names that resonate. Iron wire, willow leaves, dry firewood, nail head and mouse tail, hemp fiber, axe cut. Chowchile. 这个你说它是水也可以说它是天也可以我们从唐宋甚至从敦煌啊这个一千多年了 这是艺术上充满了灿烂的色彩，啊，但是也有没有色彩的，光是墨啊，这个表现的都有。好，这张也算。这张画好了，这张这张呢，不完全是我们的家乡，但是。意思是我们的家乡，在北门，这个是我的以前北门的城门，我的家大概就在这里，每天嘛我们就在这里玩，大概就是这样，鸭子嘛放大一点，鸭子放大一点比较有意思。The Orchid Pavilion, a poet's outing. This is in the Tang Dynasty. There is such a saying that 
，呃，说王维嘛，画中有诗，诗中有画啊，这个这两个东西啊是相通的，啊。And it goes further. Poets would often write poems about painters, and painters would often paint poets in the act of contemplation or creation. This scroll was painted about 600 years ago. The best of the poems can evoke a feeling of place and mood as well as any brush or camera. The cold mountain temple stands just outside Suzhou. A thousand years ago, Zhang Ji wrote this. Moons down, crows cry, sky full of frost. By Jiang and Feng bridges, fishing boat lanterns, sleeping in sorrow. Outside Suzhou city, cold mountain temple. Amidst midnight bells. Come visiting boats. One of China's most famous living novelists has a flat in Beijing. His name is Shen Chongwen. If China receives a Nobel Prize for Literature, then if he's still alive, he seems to be the man most likely to get it. He too comes from Phoenix. He's the uncle of the painter Huang Yongyu, and like him, drew his source material and his inspiration from the daily life of the people in the region. He's written more than a hundred novels, but stopped thirty years ago because he didn't feel free to write as he pleased. The Chinese philosopher Mencius said that the ideal man is one whom riches and honor cannot seduce, power and force cannot bend, and poverty and obscurity cannot alter. I have a lot of pictures, for example, I have a lot of pictures, and I have a lot of pictures. 真正说来，以以按照正统派的说法呢，我都不算个，是个假知识分子，是个半知识分子，不算个真知识分子。啊，呃，诗歌这些呢，我不太懂，其实我也写，我总对理论这个东西啊，啊，不会不懂，我总是实践，实践来摸它，所以我写诗人家都不知道我会，几十年都不会写，就是不，人家都不知道，我不写，我不写不用了。我我大概是个太那是太实际的人，但是充满了幻想。那是充满我说人到八十岁了啊，呃，但是脑子里还有些隐约停顿在个婴儿状态中间。说对一切事情也不太悲观，总晓得对国家什么，尽管我们知道有困难，但是并不悲观啊。我这人本身自己本身不悲观，这也大概是我能够活下来的原因。Confucius wrote in the Analects that the worthiest men retire from the world. Those a little less so retire from certain places. The next best retire from people of disagreeable appearance, and the least worthy retire from people of plausible words. Shen Chongwen seems to have retired to an inner world. 我记得我们。有个朋友啊，现在哲学家很有名的，叫金岳霖先生。他说一切事情呢、啊，呃，做事一切是事情呢、啊，都要做到，好像两个人发誓的，呃，大概他这工作才有点成就。我总晓得要写五十年来才成熟，但是这个社会变化太快了，啊，三十年就变整个，所以我就不能不推到第二线了啊。本来有机会，你稍微你自己改变一下自己的生活。态度啊，你即刻就可以放到任何事里啊。
可是我有这个性格，我就你可以我让他爱我，我也不,不干这个。这也许是受中国人的影响，而且我历来我不大相信权力的，我不欢喜，我也不没有能力争，我总是要智慧这个东西呢，对比权力重要。The Chinese tradition is that a true artist is in possession of an absolute ideal and that no outside force can prevail upon him to alter a style based on inner conviction. This was put to the test during the Cultural Revolution. It was a time when, in public, friend denounced friend, children denounced their parents, and pupils denounced their teachers. For the accused, and for the accuser too. It was a reversal of traditional values of so shocking a kind that it is difficult for us to comprehend the wounds that it created. Huang Yongyu was disgraced and later flung into jail for painting an owl that winked. Mao's wife took it as a personal insult, a joke aimed at her. He said it wasn't true. If he'd meant it that way, then he'd have painted it better. So, we in the day, we don't write anything. We don't write anything. We don't write anything. So, when we start the day, we write anything. So, we write anything. 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 就可以把这个房间变成一个好像没有人画画的那个那个场所，啊，这样的一个状况。有的人不敢当众给你打招呼，他在没有人的地方给你拉拉手，说：“注意身体。”这样一句话对我是很大的鼓舞。这样一句话。使我冤枉不已。像黄永义跟我在关在一起的，他也是受了不少的气的，但是都是现在是没有感觉的，说是有什么压力，没感觉的说有什么舒服。那么是不是说你高兴说什么就说什么呢？每个人有自己的观点。那么在这个意义上讲，我觉得这个这个自由是相对的讲。有一定的条件，我自己都要约束我自己，不要走远了。所以，到文化大革命时候，我倒不太受这些这些问题的冲击啊。呃，要我打什么麻烦呢？那就人家多少人都呃，这些老革命都死掉了，我们打什么麻烦有什么了不得了？嗯，呃，那都是小事情，不知道的事情，不懂政治，也许是不懂政治，大概正因为这样的不懂，也许就好了。书少的也无所谓，我又在做，他不是不让我写，鼓励我写，不还是折中的嘛？这写这见我的时候，只需要我写，我我不写，我要求不合嘛，这个要求不能产生作品。The truth of that's to be seen in the poster-style paintings of the 50s and 60s, heavily influenced by the dead hand of Russian socialist realist art. The idealized workers stare out of the paintings like waxwork dummies. But even then, when art was in the deep freeze, there's a stirring of latent sensuality. The girl touches her hair as if in a mirror, and the glances half exchanged between heroic workers on the drill rig hint at a different sort of productivity. Luo Zhongli is an artist born out of the Cultural Revolution. Now he's famous, teaches at the Sichuan Art Academy where he was trained, and spends most of his time painting what he wants. He calls himself one of the thinking generation, a product of the intellectual and spiritual turmoil of the time. Uh, 
，学生进来红卫兵简直当时是很厉害的。All over China, the students ran wild, and the art institutes closed. The teachers were sent to work on the land. Luo Zhongli went off to paint propaganda posters in a factory for eight years. He came back when the academy reopened at the end of the Cultural Revolution. 看到那些老师之后，那是一点无地自容。以后啊，就开始上课，而且教我的这些老师，也就是曾经自己配斗过的那些老师，整过的那些老师，那个时候。当然有很多想法，那个时候嘛，看有些老师啊那些，嗯，对我们来说还是基本上是宽宏大量的，而且是嗯很很诚恳的，而且根本不见那个计不计较以前我们那些过失。This is his painting of a girl student killed in a demonstration in Beijing's Tiananmen Square. She's being carried up to an unnamed heaven by the spirit heroes of the liberation. Change the martyr and the clothes, and the picture could hang in a Catholic church. The characters in the play may change, but the feelings and the images stay the same. The painting is called Silkworm. He drew on all the skills he acquired during his years painting posters, but it's more than a poster. For a time, Luo Zhongli tried to paint in a way that was more real than real. He worked from photographs, and every hair mattered. This is called time. He said that his attempt in oil paints to beat the reality of his eyes or of the camera took him too long, so he switched to a quicker, more immediate style. He produced forty canvases of village life. From sketches he made during his eight years away from the art college, he discovered Rubens and Rembrandt, and a new model of reality in the way they observed the fall of light on the subject. Enter Dr. Sun Yat-sen.
，我本人介绍的。国民党要牺牲，必须增加新的血液，就从李大钊开始。Tang Xiaodan is a director of the old school. The film is edited by his wife. His films are solid, well crafted, almost Hollywood of the 30s in flavor, even though he's a communist. He believes, like most communists, and unlike the painters or the poets or the musicians, that reality is not about moods or feelings, but about tangible, concrete things, details that can be observed and caught in the camera. The film is being shot in Sun Yat-sen's house in Shanghai. <coughs> Mr. Tang has two sons. One is a trainee orchestral conductor with the Berlin Philharmonic, and the other is a painter called Tang Muli, who is studying at the Royal College of Art in London. It's a traumatic experience for someone who's led a relatively cloistered artistic life in Beijing to be subjected to the full brunt of Western art, from Michelangelo and the Renaissance, past the Impressionists and the Cubists, and through the rarefied air of the abstract painters, and then into the even more confusing and confused present of a Western art school. Tang Muli is struck at the same time both by the shock of the old and the shock of the new. Many of the population in all their life, the people, they haven't seen any nude, so maybe it will give them a big shock, you see, if they saw some nudes. I believe uh, in China, if you let uh, every people vote, I think <laughs> they would vote, they like nudes, I think. I think that's, uh, that's not an individual for any individual. That's a, I mean, the, 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 because nudes, I think mean, why the ancient Greeks and the Romans, they have all the uh, sculptures uh, as uh, nudes. Why we have nowadays all the athletes and these people, people like to see the gymnastics and these, partly because they, I mean, they appreciate the very good uh, structure of the body. When I was in China, most of my time I spent on painting or drawing direct from life. But now here, when I came here, now I more and more found that it was very, very important to paint directly from your imagination. By and large, communists, and even Chinese communists, profess not to believe in the concept of the unconscious. So, plunges into the depth of the unconscious mind that are routine trips for many Western artists are a new experience for Tang Muli. It's an uncharted ocean. It's not a real, I mean, the situation of the sea, of the water in terms of the color and the everything. So it's more like uh, in your mind, in your, the deepest uh, place in your, in your mind, there's uh, some sea, big sea, and all your inspiration kept there. From the perspectives of Beijing, London can seem to be, artistically, on another and quite undesirable planet. The figures in Tiananmen Square, filing patiently forward, have yet to learn that in the new climate, the correct emphasis is not to be on the heroic statue of Mao in the foreground, but on the backdrop of China behind him a landscape designed and created by Huang Yongyu, the man whom he once put into prison.
Contact with the West brings not only welcome innovation and change, but also the danger of what the present authorities term spiritual pollution. The artist, like some piece of social litmus paper, can signal changes in the moods, aspirations and hopes of ordinary people long before the message can be detected by more conventional means. They're a sort of early warning system. That's fine if the news is good, but if it's bad, then they must beware. Emperors have a habit of dealing out rough justice to the bearers of bad news. For the Chinese artist of today, reality must, as ever, truly have many faces. He is nearer now than he ever was to that fable, that very real fable, of the butterfly, told by Zhuang Zhu. Once upon a time, Zhuang Zhu dreamed that he was a butterfly, a butterfly flying about, enjoying itself. It did not know that it was Zhuang Zhu. Suddenly he awoke and veritably was Zhuang Zhu again. We do not know whether it was Zhuang Zhu dreaming that he was a butterfly or whether it was a butterfly dreaming that it was Zhuang Zhu. This is Mike Chinoy. Our next program is called Understanding, a look at the evolution of science and technology in the country that invented gunpowder, printing, and the compass, and a discussion about what China has to offer the international scientific community as we approach the 21st century.